In today's video, we're taking a look at the latest trade talk around the NHL. Tonight, we have some trade rumors concerning the Montreal Canadiens, New Jersey Devils, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Calgary Flames, and the Seattle Kraken. We also have some signings today, both in Toronto and in Vegas. We have news from Gary Bettman regarding the David Perron suspension and some other news from around the league. A lot more coming up next. Welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As you can see, we're kind of doing a different uh, style of video here today. Not uh, recording in my normal spot. I thought we'd go with a little bit more of a, a Christmas theme here. So we have uh, the Christmas tree behind me and some uh, some lights. So if you uh, celebrate the holidays and uh, you're uh, you know looking forward to spending some time with friends and family, certainly let me know down in the comments. I know we're gearing up for it. It's been a busy day getting everything prepped and making sure everything's all ready to go so on to today's news we have lots to talk about including a couple of signings we'll start with we have one in toronto one in vegas uh both regarding uh some players one's a prospect one's an extension here the toronto maple leafs have signed uh, a prospect that they just drafted in the 2023 nhl draft and that's left shot defenseman noah chadwick who was a six round pick this past year uh gets a three-year entry-level contract obviously impressive season so far in the western hawk league with the Lethbridge hurricanes uh so the leafs grant him his three-year elc so that's a big step forward for a late round pick just in the, this past draft not you know common to see uh, a ton of those players in the late rounds even get signed let alone um, that quickly so that's uh, obviously you know looks like they got him uh, you know further than um, he probably should have been he probably should have been drafted sooner and uh, they've obviously been impressed with his development so that's good news there and in vegas they've extended defenseman ben hutton he gets an early christmas present with a two-year contract extension valued at nine hundred and seventy-five thousand, so lots of slight bump in pay of course hutton's been a pretty steady member there of the vegas blue line uh, because of injuries and whatnot he's actually gotten to play a fair bit kind of worked his way into more of a spot and as time goes on here he's uh you know especially during those two years of the contract he will certainly have uh, I think a bigger role as time goes on. Hutton's kind of evolved into a pretty decent defenseman since the early days leaving Vancouver. Um, bounced around a little bit a little bit before winding up in Vegas, but it's been a pretty good fit there. And uh, their decor has been a big part of their success and was a huge part of them winning the Stanley Cup last year. So uh, well-deserved contract extension there for Ben Hutton. We finally did get word on Gary Bettman's ruling regarding the Detroit Red Wings um, suspension for David Perron. Of course, as we know, Perron was handed a pretty lengthy suspension for six games uh, during the incident that happened against the Ottawa Senators. Of course, that was the same game that Dylan Larkin was injured and ended up on the ice uh, pretty well unconscious. Um, you know, it was a serious situation, kind of a little bit scary. Um, and, of course, he ended up attacking um, you know, maliciously against Artem Zub, who actually had nothing to do with the situation at all. Um, but, of course, he was given a lengthy ban, and I honestly have no issue. I think it was a well-deserved suspension. But he did have the ability to appeal with the help of the NHLPA, and they've done that. And Gary Bettman has... Finally, after all this time, which I'm not sure how long it really should have taken, but um, he's concluded that he is withholding the suspension. He's not making any changes whatsoever. So at this point, David Perron has served his six games, and he's actually returning in their game tonight against the Philadelphia Flyers. So whether or not he's eligible to play is not impacted by this at all. He's already missed the time. So the only impact here is that if he gets uh, any kind of ruling in his favor, then the the money he would have earned during those six games, he might be able to get some of it back. Uh, obviously, players forfeit that money uh, when they are you know, in trouble with player safety, uh, whether it be a fine or a suspension. Now, because of the length of the suspension, uh, Perron also has the option of sending it to a third-party arbitrator. Now, the process is, though, it has to go through Bettman first. So now that Gary Bettman has made his ruling, they can take the next step. And some people might say, oh, it doesn't even matter anymore. He's already back. Right. But you're talking, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars per game based on what these players earn. I suspect if he can, you know, what's the, what's the harm in having it looked at again and pushing it further? If he gets it reduced even one game, it's uh, a large sum of money. So obviously I suspect that they're going to do that and see what they can do to help Perron's pocketbook. Scary situation as well with the young Ducks uh, prospect 
Leo Carlson, of course, very high pick in the 2023 NHL draft. Uh, it's been progressing nicely throughout the season. The Ducks took a slow approach with him, uh, not to play every game this year. Had a little bit of a load management feel to it, a uh, bit of a development plan. Apparently in the second half, it was expected that he was going to play a lot more. And now there's question marks if he's going to be able to because of a somewhat you know serious slash scary incident. Not to the level we saw with Dylan Larkin like I was just talking about, but on a different level. Like he got checked uh, and his leg got tangled up and he went down and it looked like he was in a lot of pain and discomfort. So we'll see where that goes. There's no word yet. On the extent of the injury, but uh, Carlson was expecting more imaging, MRI, etc., before they could kind of conclude the full extent of what he needs to do to get back. Uh, it may only be short term. There is a small break coming up. We'll give him a few extra days, but that's not really going to be a lot if it's a serious injury. And it looks like it has the potential to be serious. So obviously, like I said, I could impact this, you know, progressive plan they had in place with him and how much he was going to play in the second half. So, uh, unfortunate news for Leo and the Ducks, but we'll see here once we know a little bit more about the prognosis on what kind of timeline we're dealing with. Uh, Alexander Ovechkin finally snapped his goalless drought. Uh, I believe he was at 14 games. He did score the overtime winner uh, last night against the Columbus Blue Jackets. So Ovi has finally scored goal number six. The streak is over. Not the kind of streak he wants to have by any means. For the first time in his career, this is uh, an unusual thing, and it's the, by far the longest stretch of his career. Be curious to see if he can build on this or if it's a case where it's still going to be slow going for Ovi to kind of rack up the goals like he has in the past. Now, when it comes to the trade talk, obviously we're not going to get any trades for at least a few more days, but a lot of NHL insiders feel that when the holiday break is over at midnight on December 28th, within a short span afterwards, they expect the first shoe to drop here when it comes to the goalie trade market uh, is probably the, the most talked about section of potential trades. And what we might see is the goaltenders. There's a number of fairly high profile teams that are, you know, expected to be playoff teams expected to contend this year that have for a variety of reasons run into goalie issues, you know, from Edmonton getting some part performance to, Detroit, uh, you know, having injuries. And then you've got the Leafs with inconsistent play out of Samsonoff. Even Walls hurt. De- and then New Jersey's got inconsistent play. The Carolina Hurricanes have some injuries and inconsistent play. A lot of different stuff happening with some of the, you know, more interesting teams that are expected to battle for playoffs. So we'll see if the insiders are accurate in that we do see, you know, the first domino will fall here and I could open things up. I don't know. After an embarrassing loss, Against the Columbus Blue Jackets, you have to think the Leafs are thinking long and hard about Ilya Samsonov. We talked about a potential Samsonov trade, I think it was about a week ago, looking at the fact that prior to Joseph Wall's injury, he was clearly the starting goaltender and taking the reins from Samsonov. Then he gets hurt against the Ottawa Senators. Martin Jones comes up, and at that point, he was actually backing up Sam uh, for Wall that night, anyways, because Samsonov had missed that game because he was ill, and Jones did well. Then Jones had a good little streak there where he was doing well. Now this past game against the Jackets, both of uh, Samsonov and Jones didn't have great performances. So we'll see if Jones continues to outperform Samsonov or not, which will determine if he is part of that, you know, ideal solution in the second half of the season. Once Wall returns from injury, we don't know how long he's going to be out. It hasn't been all that long so far. He could easily be out another three to four weeks, and that's going to take a lot of time and patience for the Leafs to kind of battle through here. And they're going to want Martin Jones to t- take some of these starts and to push Samson off in the interim to make sure their team has the best chance to win on a nightly basis. But you have to think if they weren't real serious before that they're really serious now. Another brutal performance by Samsonov. Certainly you can tell by watching him that he he's having a difficult time. And I think a lot of it is between the ears. I think the guy has skill. Uh, obviously, for whatever reason, he's having difficulty living up to the pressure and the expectations that are coming with being in the mar- Toronto market. And given the other items and things that the Leafs want to do, it's pretty clear they want to add on their blue line. They need to make some changes to that decor to have a better shot at a playoff success. And they definitely would like to add at least 
I think it's fair to say at least one bottom six forward, ideally a number three center if they can find a right player. And to do that, they're going to need some space and flexibility. And treating Samsonov's contract could go a long way to helping that, and especially uh, you know with but looking at the roster, what else they may not want to move. This might be a case where they move on from a goalie, run with the other two, and still have more flexibility on between picks and prospects on what else they do to bring in more depth to make this team a better shot at winning when come playoff time, which is obviously the most important time to uh, to be at your best here. Now, a couple names to watch with the Seattle Kraken as well. The Kraken have dropped this year, and right now we're not trending towards being a playoff team, but things can change. Although most teams that are out of the playoffs right now, the odds of any of them getting back in are slim, and history and stats will tell you that there might be one team that does it. Maybe two is pushing it, but other beyond that, the teams that are in the playoff spots now are very, very likely to hang on to them. But maybe this year will be an anomaly, but that's what history tells us. So we'll see if this year, once again, falls under that. But guys like Jordan Eberle, who's a pending unrestricted free agent, and defenseman Adam Larson, who would have one more year after this year left on his contract, uh, are getting some attention on the trade market. Of course, Eberle has a lot of experience, both regular season and playoffs. He's played on a lot of high-pressure moments, big you know, big stage moments, especially when he was younger with the uh, you know Team Canada on multiple occasions. Um, didn't see any playoff success or action with the Oilers, but did get a fair bit when he was with the New York Islanders and, of course, last year with the Kraken as well. So lots to like about both these different players. You can get a, a middle six winger. You can get a top four defenseman. And, you know, the Kraken are a team, like I said, are probably going to be making a few changes. It's hard to say how deep those changes go after having this overall team take a major step backwards compared to what they were able to accomplish here just last season. Now, of course, uh, another team I want to talk about as well is the Calgary Flames. Uh, The Flames have multiple pending unrestricted free agents that are likely going to get dealt here. And I know one name that's come up uh, numerous times, well, actually there's two that we're going to talk about today, and that's Noah Hannafin and Elias Lindholm. Starting with Hannafin, I know uh, there's a lot of talk about um, a few teams being linked to him, including Boston. We've heard New Jersey, and New Jersey's come up yet again by Elliot Friedman on the latest 32 Thoughts podcast. Elliot saying that uh, there's a lot of rumblings about potential coaching change being in New Jersey with Lindy Ruff maybe being on the hot seat. Uh, we've seen changes now in Edmonton and St. Louis, Ottawa is, you know, in Minnesota is, is uh, you know, are they the next team to look at this, right? Uh, obviously, uh, the Devils and Lindy Ruff have had a pretty good history. I think there's a great connection there with some of the players, including Jack Hughes. But at the end of the day, it's just a results-oriented business, and if they're not getting it done, they're not getting it done. But Elliot Friedman believes that, you know, this is not really a coaching issue per se, and that this is more likely a case where, uh, that the team kind of owes them a trade. And that he said New Jersey's issues, especially with Dougie Hamilton being out and having that flexibility with the long-term injury reserve pool, that he said this screams Noah Hannafin to him. So he sees Hannafin being a terrific fit with the Devils and being a prime top trade candidate for them to go after. So, again, they have lots of young assets. They have some draft capital they can use. I don't know exactly what it's going to take to get Hannafin out of Calgary. Uh, clearly, if he signs an extension, it would be more valuable and a higher price tag. I don't know for sure if they would want to do that or not. Uh, he's been linked to Boston as being the main team that there probably really would be more mutual interest in signing a longer-term deal. So hard to say for sure if he does that elsewhere or not, but he would be a great pick- pickup, even if it was only as a rental with the Devils. There's no doubt. He's a great skater, great passer. Can't you know, really say he's exactly like Dougie Hamilton, but he can provide a lot of the same um, things that he brings. So, you know, would he make sense to be a top target for them? It absolutely would, and we'll see where that goes. Uh, The other top Calgary UFA that's coming up here is Elias Lindholm. Uh, He's been talked about between Elliot Freeman on the 32 Thoughts as well as insider trading on TSN with Pierre Lebrun, Chris Johnson, and Derek Dreger. And Lebrun said that essentially there's – he he links two teams, either a return to Carolina where he started his career or in Colorado, the upstart avalanche. We've also heard the Boston Bruins too. Uh, LeBron did mention them saying that you can't replace Patrice Bergeron, 
But this is probably as close as you're going to get. Same sort of thing I've said earlier in the campaign that, uh, you know, before the season even started, knowing the issues in Calgary and the unlikelihood that some of these guys like Lindholm are going to stay and resign. I was like, really, the first thing that comes to my mind is Boston. Now, they, I think they would have difficulty getting the deal done because they're not going to want to trade some of those, you know, prospects like a Matt Poitra that Calgary's probably going to ask for. You know, there's no doubt the Flames will be saying, you know, we'd like to have this kid in return. And they're going to be like, no, we, we, we can't do that. We can't, you know, we don't have a deep prospect pool. The fact that we have a young guy, um, you know, so close since being drafted, looking like he has real potential to be a solid top six player for us, we're not going to move him for a guy like Lindholm right now. As much as I really like Lindholm and they'd like to extend him, you know, that's, that's a risky move, including him. So I think the Bruins, as much as the fit would be near perfect, difficulty pulling it off asset-wise. Now, the Avalanche and the Canes might have some different players that, you know, might intrigue the Flames a little bit more. Difficult to say. If the Avalanche hadn't previously traded Alex Newhook, I would say he would be a, a great player. But, of course, he was traded last offseason to the Montreal Canadiens. So, Hard to say exactly where things go and what the return price would be, but when you get multiple NHL insiders linking them to those same teams, you know there has to be something to it and the conversations going on behind the scenes. So we'll see. Let me know where you think is the best fit for Lindholm uh, at the deadline and beyond. And in Montreal, lots of talk again about Jake Allen. His name keeps coming up by NHL insiders. Um, we've heard again from Pierre Lebrun saying that the Carolina Hurricanes and New Jersey Devils have both had recent conversations with the Canadians about possibly acquiring the veteran netminder. Uh, of course, you know, uh, another option too uh, in New Jersey, the connection there would be Marty Brodeur. Marty Brodeur, of course, worked with the Blues for a while after he first retired before he went back to New Jersey, and that was during Allen's run with the St. Louis Blues when he was had a chance to be a starting goaltender uh, for a while. He was in a tandem um, before that, but then had a good run with uh, as a starter, and then of course eventually lost the role to Bennington, where he was more of a you know one A one B for a little bit, and then more of a backup towards the end of it. So at the end of the day, Broder knows Allen well and would know if he feels he's a good fit. So that influence in New Jersey makes a lot of sense of why that connection that keeps popping up. So there's definitely conversations going on. Of course, in Carolina, with the uncertainty around Freddie Anderson, they put Ranta on waivers. He's being assigned to the AHL. They've, they've got some you know, inexperienced guys now at the NHL level. Kachekov has played well, but you, know, you need some insurance for him, no doubt. And Allen could very easily be that guy. So it is looking more and more likely that he's the veteran goalie in Montreal that gets moved. Uh, he does have some trade protection, though. So depending on what his wishes are, they may or may not need him to kind of play ball to uh, to make that happen. So we'll see where things go on that front. But lots of interest in, in, in the uh, veteran netminder, mostly in the Eastern Conference. But let me know your thoughts on all today's news and rumors down in the comments. We'll discuss further. There will be some World Junior coverage coming up as well, a preview as well as uh, results and other videos surrounding the tournament, uh, of course, from Boxing Day and beyond. So stay tuned for that. That'll be coming up here in the next few days. I hope you guys are all ready for the holiday season. I hope you have lots of time with friends and family and uh, enjoy it if you celebrate. And uh, we'll be back here with more content here in over the holidays, there'll be, there will be content every day. Uh, just might be a little bit different uh, when, obviously, when there's no games here for a couple of days. Christmas Day box, and usually there's different types of videos that I'll have on the channel just to, you know, give you something to watch and uh, have something to talk about. So let me know your thoughts on all of today's news and rumors in the comments. We'll discuss further. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around so we'll keep you up to date with all the news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.